In this video, we are trying to understand how you can download a large language model to your local computer and then use it for free rather than relying on externally hosted large language models like Anthropix Cloud or Mistral or even OpenAI's GPT models for which you'll have to pay some amount, right? Depending on the usage, depending on the rate limits, you might end up paying for the services. So instead of that, you can simply download a specific large language model out of the given list of models that you can download from Olama. So olama.com is a web page that you need to navigate to and then click on download and this will download the installer file. It's a simple two-step process to install Olama on your machine. I simply go to applications and then click on Olama and nothing shows up exactly here. But if I click on this icon, you can see that Olama is running on my machine. At the same time, you can open up the terminal and type in Olama. This itself is showing the list of available commands, which is an indicator that Olama is currently running on your machine. And now Olama space list is going to provide the list of models that I already have downloaded. Here I have one particular model that's already downloaded to my local machine, which is of size 1.3 GB. So depending on the number of model parameters that it's trained on, we basically have a corresponding size. You always need to make sure that you have enough space on your hard disk. I can navigate to this page, this GitHub page, where we have the model library. That is a list of models, their respective parameters and size listed as well. In order to download any of these models, if you are observing carefully, I have downloaded this specific version of Llama model. And I simply have copied this command and navigated to the terminal and pasted it here. So Olama run Llama 3.2-1b or colon 1b is going to help me download this particular model to my machine. And after running this, when I try to list all the models that are available, I only observe Llama 3.2 because that's the only model I have uh, downloaded to my machine. I was also a little careful in terms of the size of each model. If I'm looking at downloading deep sea carbon model, so this particular model is being trained on 671 billion parameters. And obviously the size of it is going to be extremely large, like 404 GB. So 404 GB is quite large for the given machine that I'm currently working on. So you'll have to be extra cautious on what you're trying to download here. Okay. I believe it's pretty much clear. And once this is done, I simply can type Olama serve in order to start an Olama service or or probably set up a local host server that's spinning. And if you can observe, this is a particular port. 11434 is a port that is already enabled for Olama service. And hence I go back to my Chrome. I simply can type in localhost colon, the same port that we have observed just now. And we get a message stating that Olama is running. And this again is an additional indicator that Olama is currently running and this is the endpoint that I can leverage for developing any applications on top of this or using this API endpoint, which we can say so. Using this endpoint, we can build any applications. From the terminal, how do you basically run a model? So that's again another question that we might have, right? So I can simply give in llama run this one. Since it's already downloaded, here's a prompt. And I can simply post any question. So what is Python programming? I'm going to get a response back from the LLM. The response back from the LLM is from the LLM that's being downloaded to my local machine. So you have this additional advantage of not sending your data to any external hosted services, right? So it's residing in your local machine. So your data is not being leaked out. So that's the biggest advantage that you gain from using any of these downloaded LLMs. So here you get the response back from LLM and you can start chatting with it. And once you're done with it, so you can provide this command called slash by. It's going to exit from that particular prompt back to where it was earlier, right? I can clear this off and you can explore the different commands that are available like Olama serve is what we already have uh, looked at. We also have looked at Olama list and you can explore the remaining commands as well and try to understand more about what every individual command that's listed here is. Okay. Since we are pretty much done with the activities that we can perform using terminal here, 
I simply can go back to my VS code and start writing code and use the endpoint that we have just now discussed about. So URL here is going to be the HTTP address that we have just checked a while ago, right? So I can have an additional extension like API slash chat, which forms my endpoint here. So I would want to import requests as well as JSON modules, which are going to be useful in the whole code that I'm going to write. I'm also going to define a payload here. Payload is simply a JSON object, which comprises of the model that I'm currently referencing. The model that I'm currently referencing is Llama 3.2. That's the model, right? So I can simply go back to my terminal and get the exact model name. Just copy it here and paste it in VS code. So now I have the model. I simply can provide model value here or model variable here. And messages would comprise of a list of different parameters that I can supply like role. The role here is going to be user. And what is a prompt? What's the content here? The content here is preferably the prompt that we can provide while invoking this particular LLM. I can externally provide what my prompt is. So what is Python programming? This is my prompt. Okay. So once the payload is clearly constructed, now let's go about sending a post request using requests module. So the post request is to the specific URL that we already have defined here. This URL points to the local host server that's currently spinning. So this points to Alama service that we already have set up, right? So the post request is this particular URL and JSON here is going to be the payload that we have constructed just now. And stream is going to be true. And this gets assigned to what we call as response. So we always can check what the response status code is. If response status code is going to be 200, then it indicates that we got a proper response without any errors. So for every line in the response that we are having, so for every line in response dot it a line, so we basically are looking at printing every line, right? So, but we also would want to make sure that we want this in Unicode format and hence I'm specifically setting this parameter to true and for every line that we are reading i'm just going to load this particular line and reference this message specifically content right so this is what i'm going to print for us to see the response in the terminal when we run this whole program i'm also going to provide an additional parameter for print which is going to be end just want to indicate the end of each line with a blank space that's all so now, since we have completed coding this, let's run this particular program so as to understand if this works good or not. So we clearly get the responses back. The response from LLM is related to the prompt that we have posted in this particular step called request.post. So we get completely about uh, Python programming, which is completely related to the prompt that we have asked LLM for. You can simply change the prompt to get the relevant responses back. So you need not always rely on requests and JSON module in order to actually send requests and receive responses from LLM. But we also can leverage this particular external library called Olama. So you can simply go about installing this library called Olama here in your virtual environment. So pip install Olama will help you install this particular library. And using Olama, you can set up a client object right olama.client is going to help you set up a client object which i'm calling it as client again and we basically can generate the response by accessing this particular method associated with this object called client so client.generate and within parenthesis we are going to provide the model that we already have defined let's also provide the prompt the prompt also we have defined in one of our previous steps so this is the response. So this is the response that we get from the specific model that we already have defined previously along with the prompt, right? So whatever response that's relevant to that prompt is now being sent back and stored in this particular object called response here. Now I'm just going to print out what the response is. So 
So as to understand if this works out properly or not. Let's see what the response could be. Yeah, you get the response back for the prompt that you have sent to the LLM, right? So it gave complete details about what Python programming is. So you basically have looked at two different approaches in building applications by leveraging the large language model that you have downloaded to your local computer. So you can simply change the models that you can download and leverage while interacting with LLMs by navigating to this particular page. Let's say if you would want to download Mistral, you simply take this command and run it in your terminal. But please keep in mind that you have sufficient disk space available in your local computer. That's the caveat here. Okay. I hope that this particular session was really helpful in a way that you can interact with LLMs from your local computer without having to pay for any additional costs that you would incur, especially if you are using externally hosted LLMs like Mistral or Claude or even OpenAI's GPT models. Okay. So that's all in this particular session. And thanks for watching.